I'm Craig McLean and welcome to episode 20 of the Mark 1 Escort RS2000 Reassembly. Can't actually believe we're up to episode 20 already. Time has absolutely flown by and I can't believe I've had that many episodes, but yeah, it's fantastic. Anyways, in this episode I'm going to make some more progress with the rear axle. I'm going to get the anti-tron brackets moved, get them fitted properly, get it re-powder coated, clean, etc. I'm also going to look at fitting the master cylinder and the throttle bodies properly once the master cylinder is fitted. So thanks very much for all your help in, from the last episode with the door locks. I've now managed to uh, resolve that issue now with help from you guys. I've ended up going down a certain route which I'll cover in a couple of episodes time. So watch out for that anyways. So anyways, let's crack on with some of the jobs I've just been talking about. Right, moving back on to the axle. And as I suspected, the anti-tramp bar brackets on the axle do require moving unfortunately which is a massive shame because this axle is absolutely mint which means i'm probably gonna have to get the axle re-powder coated never mind it's got to be done i can't leave it like that obviously so basically as a lot of the viewers have pointed out and very rightly so there's two different type of uh, two different types of ways of mounting the anti-tramp bars the earlier way which was like this where you have a, a rail which bolts to your boot floor and then your shock has come down at an angle, which means that the uh, the anti tramp bar can be in line with pretty much in line with the spring with the with the uh, leaf spring as it is there. So that's uh, that's the early method, and then the later method was where you had you basically had like little turrets in the in the boot floor for the shock absorbers to go up into the boot floor. And what that meant was the shock absorbers were in a more straight line so they basically went up in a straight line here instead of like this one where they're going to go over at an angle like that from this point here up at an angle they basically went straight up so what happened was you had you had anti-tramp bars with a dog leg in which came across and into the bracket there so that it so that it missed the shock absorber unfortunately this has been uh the brackets on this one are for the later style with the dog leg uh, anti tramp bars and we've got the straight ones so that means i'm going to move the bracket over to suit this application so I'm, i've basically set the axle up there's my plumb bob idea i explained earlier i think it was in the last video how i've set the axle up to get it perfectly central um there's one of both sides i've now got the axle clamped in place temporarily in a position where i'm happy with it uh, I'm now going to take it back out, whip them brackets off, put it back in again, clamp it in place correctly, mark it up, tack the brackets in place. Another thing you've got to do is you've got to jack the car up so that it's in its rest position when it will be on the ground before you tack them brackets on. It's got to, The weight has got to be placed on the axle before you tack them brackets on. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, like I said, I'm going to take it out, take the, uh, whip the brackets off, move them across, put the, put the axle back in, tack them on with the car, in it, and it's uh, uh, you know, with the jack under the axle to put the car into its suspended position, and then whip it back out, weld them on properly, and get it repowder coated. So let's get cracking. Well, that went way better than expected. They've come off quite nicely, and generally, when you're cutting through welds, you end up gouging into the steel. And other than a tiny little mark there, and a tiny little mark there, that went really, really well. So that's more or less why it'll be. If it was there, it'll be there. So yeah, pleased with that. I'm now going to get it put back in the car, get it mocked up, jacked up, and tacked before I can fully weld it. Quick update, axles back in, tramp bars are on, brackets are fitted to the tramp bars. As you can see, they now line up really nicely on the axle, both sides. That one, that side needs pulled this way a tad when I weld it, but that's no problem. So yeah, they're now ready to weld. Once I get the car jacked up, I can get a couple of tacks on them. Because like I said before, the car's got to be in its uh, in its suspension resting position before you before you weld them brackets on. Not entirely sure why, but that's the way it is. So I'm now going to get it jacked up and get a couple of tacks put on them so then I can take it out and weld it up properly. Right, we're jacked up in a fashion. I've just took enough weight so the wheels on the frame have just left the ground by a couple of millimetres and no more. But that's so it's clamped in place. I've kind of jammed some bits of steel in to hold the top uh, 
passenger side anti roll bar in the right place. That's now uh, more or less equal to the driver's side within a mill or so. Uh, so I'm happy enough with that. They're now clamped in place and ready to tack in place. And I absolutely hate tacking underneath a car ever since the day when I was working away one day, uh, welding away under a car, and a red hot spark went right down my lug hole because I was lying on my side and it's burnt its way all the way to the bottom. There was nothing I could do about it and that was absolutely bloody excruciating, let me tell you. I had earache for days. So ever since then, I sometimes wear ear muffs when I'm welding underneath. <laughs> Anyways, let's get it tacked and then I can take it out and weld it properly. Right, we're all tacked up. So I'm basically now gonna, something I learned from watching one of the YouTube videos, I think it was possibly Trev's blog. He's an absolute expert when it comes to fabrication, welding, etc. And he said, if you want to, I'm sure it was him who said, if you want to lay down a nice even weld all the way along, and you've tacked something in place knock the tacks back first so you know grind the tacks not all the way back so you you know you lose your strength yeah from holding your bracket in place but just knock the tops off them and then you can weld basically right over the top so that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm just going to take the tops off them and then i'm going to run a, a nice continuous weld all the way around so we'll get on with that now And there we go, fully migged in. And ready to clean up for powder coat. So I'll get it cleaned up, I'll let you see it when it's cleaned up and then I'll have to take it for powder coat. Because what was a beautiful axle is now unfortunately destroyed. But I'm sure it'll look perfect when I get it back. Right, finally we're done. I've spent quite a bit of time preparing this to be repowder coated and that's why it's going tonight so yeah that's now ready once it's powder coated to go in permanently be bolted in place finished off and we're just waiting for some other bits and bobs to finish it off right less than 24 hours later and i've got my axle back from powder coat and it looks absolutely superb i can see my face in the black it really is a beautiful job all the brackets are fitted and everything have turned out really really well so yeah i'm chuffed to bits with that uh, and now i need the rubbers that go between the clamps and the leaf springs and this axle can then be probably bolted back in for the final time hopefully so yeah we are finally starting to make some good progress with the rear axle right today's first job is to fit the Willwood master cylinder and then I can get my throttle bodies bolted on permanently. So what the instructions say about the master cylinder is that this is outlet A and this is outlet B. And it says you connect port A or outlet A to the, the brakes at the end of the vehicle with the greatest total effective piston bore area on most vehicles, that will be the front. And then this one is the same, but it's the lesser bore area, generally the rear. So front outlet, rear outlet, that's what the instructions are telling me. So I can get it bolted up, then I can start making the lines up, flaring the ends, get it bolted up. I do have to bleed it through, there's some bleed off pipes, I'll worry about that later. Right, this is me being very, very, very tight. <laughs> I've got the rear line, which is already run in, to flare. And I thought my mate had a handheld flaring tool, but he doesn't. I don't have a handheld flaring tool. So rather than going out and buying a handheld flaring tool, I've actually clamped the vice mounted one to a bracket that's already welded onto the frame. And I managed to bring the pipe down to it. 
to put the flare on <laughs> just to save a bit of money and buying a flare and tool to be honest i could do with a handheld flare and tool but it's not top of my priority list right now it's uh i'll start gathering some more bits and bobs i think once i get this car finished but yeah <laughs> things you've got to do uh hey don't knock it though because it's just done that job absolutely perfectly chuff with that save myself a bit of door there right we're done we're bolted in the pipes are connected up tightened up and that's another little job out the way yeah the brakes are well well on the way now we need flexi hoses from the for the front to go from the bulkhead to the uh, struts and we just need to put the brake assemblies together on the axle and that'll be the brakes ready to bleed so yeah the uh the pipes have got plenty of gap between them there's no rubbing there's a couple of mil gap between all points on the pipes because we don't want no chafing so yeah i'm really pleased with how that's turned out it looks really really nice and neat it's just a t it's just a case of uh spending your time on the brake pipe bending and making sure they're they're as neat as you can possibly get them right the only thing that's been stopping me fitting the throttle bodies properly was that master cylinder because that would have been pretty much impossible to do with them bolted in place so now that's all done i can now look at bolting these up properly now i did mention in a, a previous video that there's no gasket required for the face of these throttle bodies you simply use these rubber o-rings and they fit into the groove uh, quite nicely on the throttle body uh, flange face and what i generally do as well because the throttle bodies i've got on the mini are exactly the same design as this made by specialist components they did it exactly like that and uh, what they advised to do and what i did at the time was run a very very small bead of clear silicon into the grooves and then a little bit just dabbed over the top of the silicon uh, of the uh, rubber gear, rubber o-ring and then offer them up so that's exactly what i want to do just to give it a fighting chance so yeah i can get the rubber o-rings fitted and then i think we better take this tape off there uh, don't think it's going to breathe very well with that tape on it uh, probably won't come off too easy actually it's been on a couple of years now but yeah let's get cracking and get them bolted on for the final time right that's all the rubber seals in to the throttle bodies another good thing about adding a little bit of silicon is it helps hold them say uh, them rubber o-rings in so they don't fall out when you're bolting it up and as suspected getting the tape off on the other side was a bit of a challenge it's all done now we've got a perfectly clean mating face so let's get these throttle bodies bolted on hopefully for the last time well it maybe doesn't look any different but that's the throttle bodies now bolted on properly they look absolutely great as they always did but we've now got them fitted properly we've got the dipstick tube is now fitted well as well that's been secured in place and as you can see we've got plenty of clearance there between the throttle bodies and the master cylinder so we're going to have no issues there probably the only small issue will be filling the master cylinder up it's not the most accessible but it is what it is it's it's a you know it's a more modern engine in a classic car you've got to take that into consideration another little job complete another one i can tick off my list so the next little job i decided i need to make sure the inside of this axle is perfectly clinically clean it is it is every bit as important as your engine case or your gearbox case really because you've got gears working inside that middle section so you don't want grit getting into it but it is absolutely rammed with grit probably from when it was uh, shop blasted there is absolutely loads i run brake cleaner through it because that's generally what i use for a lot of cleaning and it's having very little effect there's that much i think the only thing i can do with it which i didn't really want to because it's steel but the only thing i can do with it is run the pressure washer through it to get it out i'm going to have to run the high pressure pressure washer through it and blast it all out i've got no choice other, unfortunately this has got to be clean before i can put the diff in right i've probably went overboard but i've just spent about two and a quarter hours running chemicals and water through this axle because it was absolutely thick with grit from the blasting process if i get it to focus there you go you can see it's just pure pure grit if that gets into your diff into your bearings it's there uh, it's the end of it's the end of that so yeah i'm now fairly confident i've got 
at least 99% of it out it now looks absolutely gleaming all the way down the shaft everywhere I can get my fingers feels nice and smooth so yeah it's a massive massive difference to what it was before and it's as good as I'm probably gonna get it right guys after a hell of a lot of head scratching I finally got down to the bottom of the issue with my off um, half shafts and the and the offset between the drum and the back plate because I'll insert a photo now from a previous video that shows the gap between the drum and the back plate and as you can see that's way way too big and I always knew that was way too big so today I had a different shaft these are a pair these are a matching pair I had a different shaft which had a less offset than them two so I thought right I'll push a bearing onto it and we'll try it in place so I pushed a bearing on built it all up put the drum on all looked good until I realized uh, that the well it was actually my mate who pointed out he says I don't think the drum's quite seated properly on on the center part of the half shaft so I spent a little bit of time and I got that seating better and then the drum caught the back plate it was rubbing along this bottom edge I thought right so now we've got uh, a, a half shaft that brings the drum out far too far too much and we've got uh, a half shaft that brings it in far too much and I couldn't figure out what was going on so then I swapped the half shaft that I just put the bearing on for one of the pair there and it was absolutely perfect bang on in every way I thought how can that be last time I tried building this up that was a mile out that was that, that the gap between the drum and the, and the and the back plate was huge so why all of a sudden is it now correct so I'm sat here scratching my head I thought let's try the same thing with the other back plate put the other back plate on with the same shaft and that massive gap appeared again and what we've got is possibly a capri back plate i've got a non-matching set of back plates it's took all this time to get down to that issue the gap or the height sorry between the face here and the back that that that, that distance there is far far more than that distance there by about maybe seven eight mil so all along the issue has been that i've got one correct back plate for the driver's side and one incorrect back plate for the passenger side which is a massive shame considering the work i put into getting them powder coated up and and right but i'm now getting uh the correct back plate sent out i'll have to get it powder coated again and then i can finally get it together but at least now we know i've got the correct shafts I know a lot of people have been saying I should have gone for the uh, Quaif uh, two-piece shafts, and I agree. I would love to go for the the, the Quaif uh, hard, you know, better quality shafts than what we have here. But right now, it's not top of my list for uh, for you know for for cost more than anything. It's maybe something probably is something I will drop back onto in future, and we'll replace them with the Quaif higher quality items. But for now, I'm going to use them two shafts. I'm going to whip the bearings off next, press the new bearings on. We need one new back plate, and then we can finally get it built up for the last time. What a bloody nightmare. To be honest, if there's one thing that's made this a bigger issue than it should have been, it's my lack of experience in building escorts. Because as I've mentioned before, this is the first classic escort that I've built up. Had it been a Mini that I've been working on since my mid-teens, I reckon I would have had that issue resolved Probably straight away, I would have, have recognised the issue straight away. But yeah, you live and learn, and uh, every day is a school day, as they say, and this is certainly one for me. A little more progress. I've cleaned up, primed, and painted the rear handbrake adjusters, mechanisms, re ready to be fitted. I did think about getting these blasted and powder coated, but you can't get them powder coated because all these moving parts would get clogged up and simply wouldn't work properly. That's why I've given them a light dust with uh, with satin black and a bit of primer and everything still moves as it should perfectly free. It will all be getting greased up though. So yeah, they're now ready to fit. Well, I said I was going to put some welds when I put the new bearings on. But that's the first time I've ever used the welder on full power. 
Bloody hell, what a crackle it makes. But yeah, you can actually see on the ring there where it's actually started melting the metal away because there's that much current flow. So I'm really, really confident that that's going nowhere. I've actually put two little tacks on that side and two little tacks on the other side. So yeah, I'll get this cleaned up and bolted back in. Hopefully, again, for the final time. Right, we've finally got one side built up at least. All new pads and springs in. Uh, at first, I fitted the wrong... Uh, the handbrake mechanism from the other side onto this side and uh, quickly became apparent that it was the wrong way around so I swapped that now the whole mechanism is working great the handbrake, the handbrake uh, does its job so yeah we can get the drum on and until we have to pull the shaft out to put the diff in slightly later we can forget about that for now uh, I just obviously need to get the other bearing for the other shaft and the new backplate powder coated and build the other side up then we can get the diff in and finally finish it off. But yeah, we're, uh, we are getting there now. We're making steady progress. And with our newly painted drum fitted. And as you can see now, we now have the correct gap. The drum sits a couple of mil off the back plate as it should. That's so much better. Pleased with that. One out the way, one to go. Right, a couple of bits of progress today. I've obviously did the brake line, which goes from the passenger side cylinder up over the diff housing, across to the driver side cylinder, and then the link pipe that goes from the driver side cylinder up over the axle to the bracket on the other side. It still needs flared and it still needs the pipe fitting, fitted on the other side. As soon as I get the flexi hose, I'll flare that, I'll fit it all up, finish it off. But that concludes the, uh, the hoses for the axle, basically. So what I've done with them, where they go through the clamps, that top, the top pipe there of the two, that one I'll have to come back off to reflare it, that's why I haven't clamped it up there yet. But what I've done with them, where they go through the clamps is I've actually uh, insulated them or protected them with three layers of heat shrink, just so we don't have metal on metal. So obviously heat shrink isn't very thick, hence the reason why I put three layers on, just to give it some protection. But this is a job I've mentioned before, I really, really enjoy brake pipe uh, bending. It's a job, like like every build, everybody's got the favorite parts and the parts that they don't necessarily enjoy so much. And this is definitely one that I do enjoy. And the only other little thing I've done with this pipe is I've drilled uh, a hole in the top, tapped it to M4, so a three mil hole, tapped it to M4, fit still and still fitting and a proper uh, brake pipe peak lip. That was just to secure the pipe along the top of the diff housing because I wasn't happy that the pipe was just flapping about. And what I've done there is I've drilled through, but the part, the bolt, because it's such a thick casing, the bolt doesn't go all the way through. So we have absolutely no issues of any foul and inside the diff housing or anything like that. Uh, I've stayed back a couple of mil from the inside of the casing because it is a good thick casing. It's about eight mil, eight, nine mil thick, I would say. So yeah, I put plenty of thread lock on it as well, so we don't get any uh, diff oil or anything coming out. But yeah, that's uh, that's them done. And the other little thing I've done, or I've went as far as I can with, is obviously, as you can see, I fitted the handbrake cable. Um, I can't finish it off because the other side, I've just had to fit the wrong back and plate. As you know, I've got the wrong back and plate for the passenger side. I've fitted the wrong one just to give us a date and point for our uh, brake lines. But it isn't built up, so I can't attach the um, the brake uh, handbrake rod on the other side. So that's why it's just sitting there wait, uh, waiting for the new back plate. But yeah, that's as far as I can go with the axle for now. We're, uh, we're pretty much getting there. All I need is the rubbers, the saddle rubbers that go in between here. To sandwich the, in between the plates so we don't have metal on metal. Then I can get the axle clamped down at both sides. Make sure it's in the right place. Take a load of measurement to make sure it's in the right place first. Then I need to jack it up, attach the anti-tramp bars, just the bolts to put through. I now have the proper bolts for the anti-tramp bars, because when I fitted them, I just fitted, uh, I actually fitted just pins through that with the wrong thread, just so that they kind of lined them up. But we now have the proper bolts through from retro bolts. So yeah, we're making real good progress with the axle now. We're not a million mile away. Uh, as soon as I get the rest of the bits through, I'll get that back, the new back plate powder coated, that side built up, rubbers fitted, clamped down, and yeah, that pretty much concludes the rear axle. Oh, apart from the diff, obviously, I've just had uh, word from GSS Goats from Jacob that the uh, the diff is now ready. I'll insert a couple of photos that he sent me 
just to show uh, some of the photos of the building up process or rather the items laid out ready for ready for being built up but it's all nice to see it's nice to see all the parts all beautifully and clean and ready to be assembled so yeah thanks to jacob for the for them uh, for them photos much appreciated and yeah once the diff comes it's just a case of slide the diff in put uh, put the gasket on a couple of nuts uh tighten it up and then obviously slide the half shafts in so yeah we are finally getting there and a uh, good bit of progress today but it's a beautiful day outside so I think I'm going to call that it for today and come back another day and uh, and progress on with some other areas. Well guys, that's it for this video. As I record this outro, I've actually pretty much finished the rear axle. Uh, I would like to have got it finished in this episode, but unfortunately I didn't get the diff in time. So I will conclude the rear axle in the next episode. I know it's dragged on now, I'm sorry about that. It's just getting parts here on time, really. So I've actually, in the last week or so, just placed an order for the exhaust. I was gonna go for the Piper exhaust, and at times I was wondering whether I maybe should have just went for the Piper exhaust because I could have saved a couple hundred quid had I shopped around. But I've actually placed an order for a custom-made Simpsons exhaust. Uh, I put a comment out on one of the Facebook pages and everyone recommended them. I know Retro Power used them. Uh, and I've heard many people say they're the best around. And when I look at the pictures of them, I just fell in love with the, the design of the manifold in particular. So yeah, I've ended up spending a little bit more than I wanted to when I've ordered that, which should be here probably in a, a good couple of weeks, I would say, because I believe they're making a batch. So yeah, that'll be something else to cover in future. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Like I say, I'll conclude the axle in the next one, uh, along with various other bits and bobs. I've got more, uh, I've got another video mostly prepared now. You know, I've been off for a week, so I've managed to get a lot of footage recorded. So watch out for that coming up in the coming weeks. So thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.